the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's all stand on this beautiful Sunday morning. How many of you have come to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth? Amen. Amen. The psalmist said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Has anybody here come to exalt the name of Jesus? Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.
Won't you just worship him this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on all over this house. Let's worship him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
this morning. Hallelujah. healing sometimes as believers as apostolics we just if it's not instantaneous then it's not a healing no you can have God touch you and set the course of recovery that may take some time so whether I pray God would instantaneously heal sister Gloria as we pray today and I believe God can going to completely restore her health, whether that happens in a moment or it takes three, four, five weeks or even a few months. Amen, amen. And we're going to continue to pray for Sister Penny. Appreciate Sister Penny in Jesus' name. Sister Josephine that's here. We love and appreciate Josephine. And sis, it's so much, it's such a blessing to have you back in the house of God. Josephine, that God will continue to restore her health in Jesus' name. Anybody here have a special uh, unspoken request? Let me see your hand this morning. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your goodness today, your presence that is in this house. We pray for these today, Lord, that are in need of physical healing in their body. Pray for Gloria. We pray for Penny. We pray for Josephine. Pray that you will touch them in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray and ask. We pray for every unspoken request in this house. Meet the needs of your people. Lord, we, pour, we pray that you'll pour out the Holy Ghost today. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you'll have your way in this service. We pray for revival in Coeur d'Alene and North Idaho and the surrounding areas. We pray for a harvest of souls. And God, we give you all the praise and all the glory in your holy and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. You guys can be seated just for a few seconds. It is so good to have special guests with us today. Uh, we want to thank all of the guests that are here today. Uh, several first-time guests. We're so thankful and so happy that you're here worshiping with us. And we pray that you're blessed today in Jesus' name. If you've never been to a Pentecostal church, welcome. It's a lot of fun. We get more excited than a Patriots fan that love the Patriots or the Seahawks fans that love the Seahawks because none of them died for our sins. None of them resurrected from the dead on the third day, and none of them can give us the hope and gift and reality of heaven and eternal life with him. So we have something to shout about. We have something to be excited about. We have something to cheer for. So, it's so good to have first-time guests, and uh, we're so glad you're here. Also, we have Brother and Sister Mays with us, and we love Brother and Sister Mays, and this is their second time here, and hopefully uh, not their last. Hopefully there's many more 
Uh, I appreciate their spirit, their seasoned ministers, and he's going to be ministering to us the word of the Lord today. And you guys just take your liberty and we're excited. How many of y'all excited to hear from God today? Amen. One thing I've noticed about this, this couple is they're very, from my perception, very sensitive to the Holy Ghost and, and very seeking of the will of God and the word of God. Uh, not just pulling out canned sermon number 365, but getting the mind of God for a particular service. And, and I appreciate that very much. Amen. Amen. We also have some special guest. And now Sister Jones is going to be sitting on the far, well, she can't sit next to Cammie either because her and Cammie get in a lot of trouble too. But Sister Jones and Sister, it's so good to have the Garretts with us. We love the Garrett family, and these guys, they're tremendous. They're doing a great work in Spokane, and uh, we love these guys. They're, they're in the middle of a remodel right now, and, and that's always a joyous experience. Yeah, there's no problems, no budgets to worry about. God just sends Gabriel and Michael to do all the work, you know, and we just sit back and eat fried chicken and enjoy it, right? Pass the mashed potatoes, please. <laughs> so, but they pastor in Spokane, Sheltering Tree, and uh, we've been friends for a few years now, and it's just, it just gets better and better. So we love these guys. They're, they're starting their vacation, and so we kind of have an agreement. When we're on vacation, we go to their church, and they don't ask us to preach because we're on vacation, and we do, we give the same courtesy. We want them to rest. There's nothing like being a pastor, then you go in to get a break, and then they're, oh, man, we got, oh, so glad you're here. Why don't you preach for us today? And we're like, well, service starts in like five minutes, you know. Be instant in season, out of season. Well, I promise I am out of season. So, anyway, but we uh, love this family, and it's so good to have our children with us in Jesus' name. Amen. There's like a kindred spirit. There really is. Yeah. You know, trouble loves trouble. Trouble loves trouble. <laughs> but I want Sister Jones to come at this time. And uh, I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate my wife. How many of y'all appreciate Sister Jones? Amen. Amen. Well, speaking of Sister Garrett, there's a very special birthday yesterday. Now she's mad. She wanted me to come up here, and now she's like, no. <laughs> we just want to honor her, our church family, and from us personally, we love Sister Garrett. We love all of everybody. But I want you to know, bring him up here for a second. This is Henry, and she's welcome. Turn around here. She's welcome to rename him, but Henry caught me and Rachel's eye. We were like, oh, he is so cute. She's going to love that. <laughs> Happy birthday. We love you. Appreciate your friendship. Love you. <laughs> Amen. Bible says the righteous choose their friends wisely in Proverbs. <laughs> We've chosen wisely here. Kindred spirits. <laughs> Amen. Yes. And we got in a lot of trouble last time we preached for them because Sister Garrett and I sat next to each other. Laughing and talking the whole time. So I noticed my husband was very precise on where he seated us today. You're in trouble after church. But <laughs> Amen. God bless you. We love you. Yeah, that, that was fun. You were, were their 13th anniversary service, and I'm trying to preach, and they're just cracking up and laughing and trying to be all, you know, you know, stealth about it. and They were trying, but no, it didn't work. Yeah, but that, you know, it's all right to have fun in the house of God. Hey, Christians ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth. I mean, you know, my pastor used to say, you know what, we should never look like we've been baptized in vinegar and sucking lemons all day. I want to invite you to my church. I'm a Christian. (laughs) (laughs) 
that's what attracted me, the person that had, to me, the church is a person that, that had told me about the Lord. He had, he had a grin from ear to ear, a glow about him. I said, man, he's got something different. I, mean, I thought it was a fruitcake at first, you know. Like, man, what's this guy? What's this guy's deal? Why is he so happy? Why has he got such a glow about his countenance? Well, now I know why after I got the Holy Ghost. But, but there was an, it's like something different about him. Christians ought to be the happiest people. Doesn't mean we won't have trouble. We won't have down times. We won't have hardships. We, that's life. But we have a hope through all that. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. We're going to receive our tithe and our offering. Our nursery can be dismissed as well. Christine, you guys did a great job. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Brother Mays, we love you. Appreciate you and your wife, and we're so honored that you guys are here. You never go wrong honoring and respecting true men and women of God. And, and these two, I believe, are true man and woman of God. They're a team. Amen. Amen. Brother Mays. Yeah, you guys are from Kansas City, aren't you? Yeah. So that's that's Sister Jones's where she was raised in that vicinity. You know, and then God saved us and brought us to Idaho. <laughs> Amen. But we we uh, the more we get to know you guys, we appreciate you. And and not everybody can you say, take your liberty and follow the Holy Ghost. Some people you'd never say that to because you don't know them, you don't know their spirit well enough. I feel comfortable with Brother May's brother. We want you to just lock in and zero in with the Holy Ghost has spoken to your heart. We want to hear from God today. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Brother Mays, come and take your liberty today. Praise God. Amen. It's good to be here. You can be seated for a moment. Uh, there's so much I'd like to say. I want to first say I'm thankful for uh, the Jones family. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Amen. I mean, they are precious people. We we fell in love with him the first time. I never forget the first time we preached for him. I, I felt he was a little apprehensive. And, <laughs> and uh, he, he only did it to obey. <laughs> but uh, thank you, God, for allowing our paths to cross. Amen. Amen. I, too, want to welcome all you visitors. I don't know you. Uh, like I, he said, we're from the Kansas City area, but don't hold that against us, please. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, let's not go there. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Let's, if you turn me to the 34th Psalm, I do feel like, I told my wife, I said, man, I, I have studied all day yesterday, last night. I spent a miserable night. And uh, I just, and I even this morning, I just, I couldn't feel a direct connection. And uh, if you've ever preached, you know what I'm fixing to say. That worries you. I said, it worries you. And then, uh, uh, Brother Jones said something that clicked with me, and uh, so here I am. Amen. I, I do want to follow after the leading of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you, this church ain't big enough. It ain't big enough, brother. You would better get ready to get another building. Amen. My, my. And if God's big enough to give you this one, he's big enough to give you another one. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I love the name of the Lord. Amen. He has been good to me. Now, very quickly, let me say this. Uh, I did pastor in the Kansas City area for about 10 years, and then I pastored in Kansas for uh, another eight and a half years. And uh, it was during my last pastorate in Kansas City that 
I began to have some heart problems, and uh, so I felt it was time to resign. And, uh, man, I'm having the time of my life going everywhere <laughs> preaching, and I can leave all the troubles with the pastor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and, but uh, I under, underwent some surgery, and thank God I'm doing very, very good. Thank you, Jesus. And I just went and had a stress test last week, and I failed. No, I passed. And so, amen. He told me, he said, everything looks good. I give God the glory. Amen. I give God the glory. Amen. Psalm 34, the first three verses. Amen. If you have it, say praise the Lord. Amen. If you have it, say read. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually, continually, continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. Amen. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. And it's from these three verses I want to preach from the subject, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Now, why don't somebody go ahead and put your Bibles down, lift your hands in the air, amen, and bless the Lord right now while your pastor asks God to bless his word as it goes forth. Uh, Brother Jones, would you pray? I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. God, I'm asking you, God, for your help. I'm asking you for your strength. I'm, I'm asking you, God, in the name of Jesus. I love you, God. I praise you. Ikolomoshata. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I, I noticed Sister Jones sitting by Sister Mays, and uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, I'm glad Sister Garrett's over there, though. So, <laughs> Amen. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He then continues in verse number two to say, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Amen. Not only does he say, I will bless the Lord, but then he adds, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And the Hebrew word for boast means to be praised, to be made praiseworthy, to be commended, or to be worthy of praise. What David is telling us in the first two, amen, verse, uh, words of this verse is, I will. And it makes no difference whether anyone else does or doesn't. I will. Whether you do or not, I will. Amen. It makes no difference whether I'm by myself or with someone. I will. Amen. I will bless the Lord. And whether they do it or not, I'm going to do it. I'm going to bless the Lord. I'm going to praise the Lord with my mouth. Oh, somebody go ahead and praise him right now. I love you, I love you, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Further, it makes no difference whether I'm feeling good or bad, happy or sad, up or down. I will, I will, I will. Amen. Whether you do it or don't do it, I will. Whether my family does or not, I will. I love my wife, but whether she blesses the Lord or not, I will, I will. I love you, Jesus. Whether the rest of the church does or does not, I will. Amen. Now, I notice some of you worshiped, and I love worship, and I appreciate what I felt in this place, but some of you need to go ahead and worship to the preaching of the word just like you did to the music. Amen. Can I hear an amen? It ain't going to bother me if you get up and run around. I said, it ain't going to. I 
love you. I love you. In times of trouble, in times of adversity, I will bless the Lord. In good times and bad times, I will bless the Lord. In times of affliction and oppression, I will bless the Lord. No matter how deep the pain, how great the frustration, I will. In every situation, I will bless the Lord. In the good times and even in the bad times, I'm going to go ahead and bless the Lord. In the good times when everything is going right and even in those dark, dreary, and stormy nights when everything is going wrong. I will bless the Lord. Woo. During the troubles and the trials, I will bless the Lord. On the mountaintop or in the valley low, I'm going to bless the Lord. In sickness and in health, I still am going to bless the Lord. In times of tragedies and sorrow, I will bless the Lord. In problems of any kind, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise is going to continually be in my mouth. Somebody praise him right now. In other words, what the psalmist was saying, it's not just in my heart, but it's in my mouth as well. It's not a passive thing. It's a proactive thing. It's not just something that I do uh, uh, by sitting there on my pew uh, or my church uh, chair unmoved. Uh, it's from my heart and my mouth, uh, and it becomes vocal. I will bless the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible says four times in the 107th Psalm, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness uh, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Uh, and further, it makes no difference whether I have money in my bank account or if I'm flat busted and disgusted. Uh, I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, it was sometime after we were here the last year, it was about a year ago, uh, I bought a, a, a big motor home, a diesel pusher. I can't even afford to drive it with gas, with diesel being $5 a gallon. Amen. So I rented a vehicle this time. <laughs> but I'm still going to bless the Lord. Yeah. Amen. I said, I'm still going to bless the Lord. He is the one and the only one who's worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. He's the one who cared for me. He's the one who loves me. He's the one who redeemed me. He's the one who delivered me. He's the one who protects me. He's the one who makes a way for me. He and he alone is he who saved my soul. So I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise is going to continually be in my mouth. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Amen, amen. Praise begins with our individual will. We do not praise the Lord because of how we feel, but we praise the Lord because it's the right thing to do. Can I hear an amen? Praise is an attitude that we have got to create or produce. We just make up our mind to praise the Lord at all times because praise is a choice that we make. Can I hear another amen? Amen. We have got to get to a place in our walk with God where we can say, I don't care how ridiculous it may look to those that are around me. I don't care what they might think or might say. I'm making a choice to praise the Lord. You see, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. That's why I'm going to bless the Lord. That's why I'm going to praise him. Oh, God. I once was full of sorrow and shame, and now I'm filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I was once dead in my trespasses and sin, but Jesus has quickened me and has breathed life into my soul, and it's life more abundantly. Woo! Somebody say praise the Lord. I love you, God. David then says in verse 2, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. 
The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Even my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. My soul is going to praise him. I said my soul is going to praise him. My soul shall make him praiseworthy. My soul is going to commend him. My soul will say he is worthy to be praised. And when David uses the term the humble shall hear thereof and be glad, that word for humble that he uses means the depressed in mind or circumstance. So what David is saying is, uh, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord, uh, and the depressed in mind or circumstance uh, shall hear thereof uh, and be glad. Uh, and when I get depressed in my mind or my circumstance, uh, I just start to think how good God has been to me, uh, about how his grace and his mercy uh, has kept me. Uh, and then my mind goes to the words of that old chorus we used to sing. Uh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Woo. When I think of God's goodness to me and all that he's done for me, I just can't help myself. I've got to thank him and I've got to praise him and the depression cannot hang around. It's got to leave. I don't need no Prozac. Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. Just give me some more of Jesus. Uh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I, I just got to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And suddenly the trial doesn't seem so long. The mountain doesn't seem so high. The valley doesn't seem so long and depressing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then in verse number three, David switches from the singular wording of I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Amen. When he says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. David wants everyone to magnify the Lord with him. David wants everybody to exalt his name together. And I think David is including those of us that are here today. David wants us to magnify the Lord with him and let us exalt his name together. Somebody go ahead and praise him right now. No wonder verse 6 of the 150th Psalm says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. If you got breath in your body, you know what you need to do? You need to go ahead and praise him. Oh, I said if you got breath in your body, you need to go ahead and magnify the Lord. If you're living and you're breathing, go ahead and let us exalt his name together. Go ahead and lift your voice. Go ahead and lift your voice. Let him know it. Let him know you come up Let him know you love him. Go ahead, lift your hands. Uh, amen, your heart and your voice. Go ahead and make a joyful noise uh, unto the Lord. Go ahead and do what Psalm 98 verse 4 said to do. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Uh, all the earth, make a loud noise uh, and rejoice and sing praise. Uh, go ahead and let's praise him. This psalm, like so many others, has its roots grounded in a historical occasion. The historical context of this chapter can be found in 1 Samuel chapter 21, uh, chapters 21 and 22. It, it, it is there we find David who has just changed his behavior before Ahimelech and he's now on the run from King Saul.
uh, King Saul was not happy uh, with David and how he was being elevated by God uh, because the local women had been singing songs about him, uh, how Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. Uh, and that saying displeased King Saul to the point uh, where he had hatred toward David uh, and he sought to take the life of David. Uh, Saul set his heart to kill David uh, and David is now on the run from Saul. Uh, and during the time that David penned uh, this particular psalm, uh, he is found in Gath. Uh, it's interesting, at least for me, to note that Goliath was from Gath. Uh, and right away, as I look at these passages with just a cursory glance, uh, I find some problems with these scriptures. Uh, David runs for his life and temporarily settles in Gath. I'm having a difficult time understanding just how in the world uh, do you find safety among your enemies? Uh, how do you go to the enemy's camp and find safety? Uh, how do you find rest among your enemies? Uh, I know we often like to sing the song, I'm going to the enemy's camp. Uh, I'm going to take back what he took from me. Uh, take back what he took from me. Uh, uh, most of us recognize that song uh, because we can take no comfort in going to the camp of our enemy but there are those times when that is exactly what we need to do I said that's exactly what we need to do for example amen the Bible declares in Psalm 110 verse 1 the Lord said unto my Lord sit at thou my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool and in Luke chapter 20 and verse 43 he speaks and says till I make thine enemies thy footstool in Acts chapter 2 verse 35 in his message on the day of Pentecost Peter declares until I make thy foes, thy footstool. And in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13, but to which of the angels said he at any time, set on my right hand until I make thine enemies my footstool. Please understand me when I say these four verses are, remind us that it is not on our shoulder as a place of refuge. It's not seated at our side or perched on our shoulder, but it is beneath our feet. The devil belongs underneath our feet. Woo, I said the devil belongs underneath our feet. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Oh, the devil belongs under our feet. And that's why Romans chapter 16 and verse 20 says, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. The devil was never meant to have the upper hand. Put him under your feet. Oh God, so if you have to go to the enemy's camp and take back what he stole from you, just go ahead and do it. Just go ahead and do it. And while you're there, stomp him real good. Go ahead and make him your footstool and keep him there. Kish, who is the king of Gath, is somewhat shocked when he discovers David, who David is, and now he's on the run. And the king looks at David and he asks, why have you brought this madman to me? Now you Bible readers will remember that David had to feign himself mad. He literally had to act like he was crazy like he had lost his mind. Uh, let me pause here for a minute and state for the record that everybody that acts just like they're crazy isn't really crazy. <laughs> people, are, people around you may play crazy, but they know what they're doing. <laughs> David act like he was crazy. While Spittle ran down his beard, he scrabbled and scratched on the gate of the city because the custom of the day was uh, that they should not kill or imprison uh, those that were crazy or believed to be crazy. David initiated a plan to act as if he were crazy so the king of Gath would not take his life. Now, fear will make you act foolish and ultimately lead to your failure. When we operate in fear, it will literally make you feel like you have lost your mind. 
And that's why Paul spoke with a young preacher by the name of Timothy and encouraged him uh, to be courageous in his ministry. Uh, Paul recorded in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Uh, and I'm glad I've got that right now. I said God has not given me a spirit of fear, uh, but of power and of love and a sound mind. David, uh, amen, he's fearing King Saul and now fearing King Achish. Uh, he's on the run again. Uh, this is a strong contrast uh, to what David wrote in an earlier psalm. Uh, just go seven chapters backward and look at David's proclamation in this chapter. In Psalm 27 and 1, he says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Uh, the Lord is the strength of my life. Uh, of whom shall I be afraid? Uh, and verse number 2 says, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, uh, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Uh, and verse number three says, uh, though an host should encamp against me, uh, my heart shall not fear. Uh, though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Uh, one thing, verse four says, one thing. Uh, uh, so everybody say one thing. Uh, have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after it, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord uh, all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And verse five says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. I said, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Ah, when you get into a tight place, when things don't look very good, when you find yourself with trouble surrounding you on every side, we have an assurance that we have a God we can lean on and a God that can be depended on. That was Psalm 27. Now we travel just a few chapters down the road. And David now marches himself from Gath and finds a cave. It's located in close proximity to the very place where he killed Goliath. What a wonderful place to reminisce, to reflect, to remember, to recall. David is now hiding in the cave of Abdullam. And I'm gonna tell somebody here whether we want to admit every one of us need a cave of Abdullam. A place to remember what God has done for us. A sealed off place. A place where we can steal away. A place with no distractions where we can reflect, where we can reminisce and we can remember, a place where we can clearly hear the voice of God. And the narrative takes an interesting twist at this point. When the friends of David heard that he was found hiding in a cave of Dulam, they left their problems and their issues at home and they went to find David. And let me note here that 400 men showed up to sit with David and share the cave. Must have been a pretty big cave. <laughs> I wish I had time to stay here because this is a sermon by itself. Those men that came were in doubt. They themselves were distressed. They themselves were disenfranchised and disenchanted. Amen. But they found David and they joined him in the cave. Oh, God, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. David in a cave finds himself struggling with himself, struggling with threats from his enemies, struggling with family and friends, riding him like monkeys on his back, and struggling with his future. He struggles until he considers God. And when he considers God, he thinks about God, his perspective changes and praise and worship are now provoked. There's something about, oh God help me, there's something about praise that causes your mind to go back into your memory bank and recall the good things that God has done, amen, in your life. David 
remembered some good things. For he continues in verses 4 through 7 of our text psalm. And he says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me out of from all my fears. They looked unto him and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord hears him and saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. And David now, when life pushes in on him, when trouble comes like an uninvited guest to a dinner party, uh, when despair and depression hang around like twin buzzards uh, awaiting a pending breakfast, uh, this is where and when this psalm was birthed. Uh, David now picks up parchment and pen uh, and he begins to author this psalm. Uh, something on the inside of David begins to spring up uh, and he turns his cave into a cathedral of worship. Uh, David broke out into a praise uh, and he pushed and he pushed uh, until he got to the place of worship of God. David takes his time as he begins to write. He does not rush. He takes his time during the process. You might say, well, how do you know that? I know that because this psalm is called an acrostic psalm. That means each verse begins with each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. He says, I will bless the Lord. You see, it's personal for me. If nobody else does, I will. This is an affirmation of intent. If nobody else does or doesn't, I will. Uh, David said, I will. Uh, and that's where he differs from most of us. Uh, most people are going to say, well, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm not going to bless the Lord. Uh, uh, but I want a heart like David. Uh, I will bless the Lord. That word bless in the Hebrew is where we get the word eulogy. I will speak well of God. Regardless of my situation, I will speak well of God. And this is, amen, the very thing that kept Job at the forefront of his situation. You remember how the devil said, I'll make him curse you. But Job came through this trial and this situation would fly in colors. Job proclaimed, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. We must learn how to bless God from both sides. When the Lord giveth, I will bless the Lord. And when the Lord taketh, I'm still going to bless God. When I'm up, I'm going to bless the Lord. And when I'm down, I'm still going to bless the Lord. When I have money, I will bless God. When I'm broke, I'm still going to bless God. When I'm working, I'm still going to bless God. When I'm laid off, I'm still going to bless God. When I'm feeling well, I'm going to bless God. Woo, when I have aches and pains, even when I feel sick in my body, I will bless the Lord. When I'm understood, I'm going to bless him. When I'm misunderstood, I'm still going to bless him. When I'm relaxed, I'm going to bless God. When I'm stressed, I'm still going to bless God. This is what also keeps the worship service on a high note. <laughs> Praise God. This is why we should stop being nothing more than a parrot when we come to church. Amen. Brother Jones will say, come on, somebody say amen or clap your hands to the Lord. No one ought to tell us how to praise God and when to bless God. We need to learn how to bless God on purpose. I heard someone call it premeditated. I just got some premeditated praise. You don't come to church and think how good God's been to you. You already should have done that at home. Uh, you shouldn't have to wait for the preacher to warm you up with spiritual calisthenics. Uh, woo, my God, my God. Uh, that's why David proclaimed in the 122nd Psalm, uh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, You ought to come to church ready to praise the Lord. Amen. If you're here for the first time, amen, don't get used to it because I said it's this way all the time. I said it's this way all the time. Woo! David said, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
I'm not just going to look thankful. I'm going to be ready to say thank you, Lord. Thank you makes room for more. Is anybody ready to bless the Lord today? Maybe you're different than me, but when someone does something for me, I at least ought to have enough sense to say thank you. Amen. Have you ever done something for somebody and they didn't even have the courtesy enough to say thank you? You don't go, you don't go out of your way to help that person anymore if they can't even say thank you. I don't know all the good it does, but somebody... Amen. Wants to be in traffic. My wife will tell you I get very impatient. I'm confessing. And it's pinched down to one lane and I'll let somebody in. And they don't even wave in their mirror. I thought, I ain't, I'm going to mark that car. I ain't never going to let them in again. But don't allow the gas situation, your gas situation to rob you of praise. David says that at what place you're at doesn't make a difference. It's God that makes a difference. It's not the place. Look at what he says from the midst of his cave. He identifies why he will bless the Lord. The 34th Psalm and 4th verse, he freed me from my fear. Amen. Psalm 34, 6, he delivered me from my trouble. Psalm 34, 7, he guarded me. Psalm 34, 8, he showed me kindness. Psalm 34, 9, he supplied all my needs. Psalm 34, 15, he listened when I talked to him. And Psalm 34, 22, he redeemed me. Now David says in response to what he's done, I I'm going to break my silence. I'm going to break my silence. You see, I've been hiding in the cave of Adullam too long. I've been running and hiding for too long. It's now time to break my silence. If God has healed you, break your silence and bless the Lord. If God has protected you, why don't you break your silence and bless the Lord? If God has delivered you, break your silence and bless the Lord. If God has ever sustained you, break your silence and bless the Lord. If God has kept your family, Break your silence and bless the Lord. If God has blessed you with a job, break your silence and bless the Lord. If God has blessed you to retire, break your silence and bless the Lord. If God has blessed your breakthrough, amen, break your silence and bless the Lord. If God has blessed you up and down the highway, break your silence and bless the Lord. Somebody bless him. Sister Jones, would you come to the music? If he woke you up this morning, break your silence and bless the Lord. If God has blessed you with a reasonable portion of health, uh, break your silence and praise the Lord. Uh, David said, amen, praise is not only going to be on my mind, uh, it's also going to be on my lips. Uh, you know, the problem is too many of us only have God on our mind, uh, but when it enters your mouth, uh, there should be an overflow of praise that is on your lips. Uh, no matter what's going on, there needs to be an overflow of praise. Uh, the children not acting right, uh, go ahead and give God an overflow of praise. Uh, husband and wife not getting along, go ahead and give him an overflow of praise. Uh, amen. When you're lied on, go ahead and give an overflow of praise. Uh, when I'm talked about, uh, go ahead and give an overflow of praise. Uh, when I've been cheated, uh, go ahead and give God an overflow of praise. Uh, when I've been mistreated, go ahead and give God an overflow of praise. Uh, when I've been used, go ahead and give God an overflow of praise. Uh, when I've been abused, go ahead and give God an overflow of praise. Uh, when I'm Scorned, uh, amen. When I'm feeling down, uh, oh, give God an overflow of praise. Uh, when I'm up or when I'm down, uh, give God an overflow of praise. Uh, somebody praise Him. Uh, somebody praise Him. Uh, when times are good or times are bad, uh, give God an overflow of praise. Uh, woo! Uh, 
when it seems like I'm blessed, when it seems like I'm being cursed, go ahead and give God an overflow. Give God an overflow of praise. Overflow, 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 overflow. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Somebody praise him as pastor comes. Come on, Kiolombo, Shitani, Obamano, Kiosu. Tell you what I feel right now. I feel like somebody in this house needs to pray. Somebody you need to really, amen, you need to get it down inside. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to bless him with all of my heart. With everything that's within me, I'm going to bless him. Would you come? Amen. Would you let this man of God anoint you with oil? Come on, Brother Jones. Amen. Somebody come right now in Jesus' name. Somebody come right now in Jesus' name.